Let's briefly talk about reactive extensions in Dart today. Reactive extensions is this approach to programming. It's a combination of techniques and ideas from patterns such as observer, iterator, and from functional programming. I say it's an approach because it's something you can use, but you don't have to. It's a certain way of programming. So some people find it difficult, complicated, some other don't like it simply and other people quite enjoy it, so I hope you will enjoy it as well. Reactive extensions is uh, general. It's not related to any particular programming language. So you can, those, those ideas, those, those techniques, they are incorporated in many programming languages, such as Java, JavaScript, Clojure, and of course Dart, available as Rx Dart package. So when talking about reactive extensions, I mentioned the observer pattern and the iterator pattern. So there is this uh, famous book in computer science called Design Patterns, which was written by uh, four people, four famous people in this field. And this book is, is often referred as the Gang of Four. Those people are referred as Gang of Four. And if people say Gang of Four, it refers to the design patterns in programming. There are many patterns, and as you can see here, we can find the iterator pattern, and there is the observer pattern as well. So if you're interested, I encourage you to read this book, read those patterns. Some of the patterns can be applied in many programming languages. Some of them are only applicable to some of the programming languages, while certain techniques or certain features of certain programming languages make that some of those patterns are not needed. So let's go back to code and let's talk about reactive extensions in Dart. In Dart we already have streams and Eric's Dart extends that concept, provides new abstractions which slightly improve what's already available in the language. Eric's Dart provides two essential abstractions. The first one is observable and the second one is the notion of subject. So let's start with the observable. Observable is like a stream. It's, it's exactly the same, except it adds something. It adds some methods. Uh, it has some new features. So whenever we are talking about streams, we can replace this notion, this word with observable. And it means basically the same thing. So we can just go ahead with our code and instead of using the stream type, the stream class that comes from Dart, we can replace that with the observable, like so. And we don't have to do anything uh, more. Since observable, which is provided by Eric Dart, extends streams, everything that's already in streams, it's also available in observables. The way we use those variables doesn't change. So we can just replace that and it should work as, as before. And it works indeed. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the notion of subject. So subject is something like a, like a stream controller, but it provides some additional things. Whenever we use stream controllers, we can now replace that with subjects. And in Dart, we have just one entity called stream controller and in Rx Dart, we have different types of subjects, so different types of, of controllers. And there are some very small differences between them. So the first one, the most basic one, is Publish Subject. And Publish Subject is similar to the stream controller that comes with Dart, with uh, one tiny difference, being that you can subscribe to streams which are provided by the Publish Subject many times. As you remember in Dart, you can subscribe to every stream only once. And here, Eric's Dart, it provides the publish subject, and publish subject is a stream controller, which provides a stream which can be subscribed many times. So this is this extension, this is this, this, this thing that improves upon the, uh, the regular uh, streams in Dart. That's the publish subject. And now behavior subject. So behavior subject is exactly as publish subject with another tiny difference, which is that it has a 
a very small memory and it can remember the last seen value. This behavior subject manages a stream and this stream generates, it, it provides the values. And because this subject has this memory, it, it can remember the last seen value. So whenever you ask the stream of this subject for a value, if there is a new value, it will provide it. If there isn't any value, it will give you the last seen value. So it means that there is no waiting. Whenever you are interacting with a stream provided by the behavior subject, you won't be having this waiting phase, this waiting um, stage in your application. It will only appear with a regular stream or with a stream provided by the uh, published subject. But if you are interacting with streams that are operated by behavior subjects, there won't be any waiting. And let's see that it's in practice. So here, uh, the count subject is the behavior, behavior subject of the type behavior subject. And now, as you can see, the list is being loaded while I see the, the counter all the time. So let's switch to repeat that. So again, the list is being loaded and the counter is always displayed. And because this list always returns the same uh, number of elements, it's always 10. But it also means that if I click here and this list finishes, and if the number of elements were different between one request and another, you will see 10 for a while, and then it would, it would quickly change to the, to the new number. You wouldn't see waiting, it will be one number, the last seen value from the previous request, and then right away the new value. So it may not be the, the thing you would like to have in your application. So let's see. So let's now change it to the published subject and let's, let's see how it behaves. So this is published subject. Okay. So now, as you can see, it waits as long as the request finishes and we have the response. Let's repeat. So now it, it always it is always waiting for the value to, to arrive. So published subject is usually something you would prefer in this situation because it gives a hint to the user that the data is being fetched, that something happens in the background. And you have to remember that this delay of two seconds is artificial. So if you go to the service, remember that we introduced this delay just to mm, visualize that there may be some delays in the communication with the, with the backend. And in our case, it's artificial and it's always two seconds so that whenever I change the top here, I have this two seconds of waiting before the request is finished and we have the response. So that's it. Published subject can be subscribed many times. It provides the streams that can be uh, listened to or, or subscribed to many times, which is the difference between published subject and a regular stream controller. And behavior subject is something which builds on top of published subject and it has a tiny memory and it remembers the last seen value. So it provides the, the data right away. So now um, there, there are some other tiny things that simplify a little, a little bit the code. And one of them is that if you have a subject, a, con a stream controller, which uh, provides the streams or observables. So let's, I'll be using those terms, observable and stream one or another. From now on, it's, it's the same thing. So here, the subject, if you want to listen to the streams or observables provided by the subject, you don't have to ask for the stream specifically. You can just drop it and the listen method is available directly on this instance. So you don't have to ask for the stream first. So it's like a tiny, tiny thing which like makes the code uh, shorter in this particular case. So here, as you can see, I've already used that in the previous lesson. And that's pretty much it. That's the, the difference. And in the future episodes, we will be diving in into the specific methods that are provided uh, on for observables in reactive extensions in Dart. So stay tuned. See you next time.